This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max with Max Tech. Today, we are gonna be doing an ultimate comparison, pitting our top of the line 16 inch MacBook Pro as far as performance against Razer's new 15 inch studio laptop that is designed for professional work and is just set up to compete and maybe beat out the MacBook Pro. So I love Razer's design the box, magnetic little flap, they're doing a great job there. And let's pull out this tab. And right away, I can feel that this thing definitely has a bit more chunkiness and weight, not that it's big or heavy. 4.8 pounds compared to 4.3, but just feeling this thing in my hand, uh, it feels really, really nice, all aluminum. And one thing that I love is that the logo on the Studio Edition is not green, it's not gamery, it's very subtle. Let's open this thing up here and get rid of this. The first thing that stands out is this 4K touch display. Yes, this is an OLED. And in this video, we're gonna compare these screens, the keyboards, the speakers, the CPU performance, and especially the graphics performance, both on battery power and when you're uh, you know, plugged in. That's because this thing has a Quadro RTX 5000 graphics card with 16 gigabytes of memory. That is absolutely massive. And I think that's one of the big selling points for professionals with this laptop. And we'll see what kind of difference that makes in the real world compared to the AMD graphics that's inside of the MacBook Pro. Let's jump right into comparing the different ports and options. I'll start with the 16 inch MacBook Pro because it's very simple. We have two Thunderbolt 3 ports on this side, another two Thunderbolt 3 ports on this side, and our headphone jack. That is all. Now, with the Razer uh, Studio, we have a ton of ports. We do have a proprietary charging port. We'll talk about charging and battery here in just a second. We have two USB Type A ports, and these are full speed, 10 gigabit per second. Uh, so nice and fast on the connections. We have a headphone jack. And flipping around to the other side, we have a Kensington lock. We have a display port output over here, an HDMI output, another USB type A port, and then one single Thunderbolt 3 port. Now the last thing we have here is an SD card reader. Not only does it have one where the Mac Pro doesn't, I wish it did, this is a UHS 3 card reader, which can read at just over 600 megabytes per second. And I'm so glad that Razer went with the newest technology. In fact, there are no SD cards out there that actually use this yet, but when they come out in a year or two, you're gonna get to be able to get full speeds with this laptop. Now, if we compare the studio to this one, it's actually slightly smaller, it's not as tall, slightly shorter by just a tiny bit. Uh, so the overall size, it is heavier, but if we take a look at the thickness, it is definitely clear that the Razer Studio is thicker. Taking a look at the back, we see that the full hinge is made out of aluminum, just like the MacBook, which is fantastic, but we do have a plastic insert, which I'm guessing is used for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and this Studio Razer has Wi-Fi 6, which will give you better range and uh, you know stronger signal through walls and also faster speeds compared to Wi-Fi 5 on the MacBook Pro. Now looking a bit lower, we have this large cutout for the exhaust of the hot air, and this thing has a lot of powerful components packed in, so they are prioritizing the thermals, which I'm excited to test out here in just a bit. Now on the bottom, we have two intakes for fans, and because these are on the bottom, uh, Razer put these very large standoffs that are quite thick to make sure that air can get in. And with this design, if you put this laptop on, say if you're laying in bed, you have your comforter there or blanket, that's gonna be blocking this. Whereas I really like what Apple does, where if you set this on your lap or anywhere, the intakes are actually on the sides that are tapered off, so you're not blocking your airflow, and of course the exhaust comes out here out of the back. Now I'm about to compare the trackpads and the keyboards, but I have to mention the power adapters and the battery. So the Razer comes with this really high quality, really nice uh, power adapter. We have these braided cables. We have this really crazy proprietary connector that uh, it's very large, but it looks very durable. And this thing is 230 watts of power that it can give uh, to the laptop. And it definitely needs that. Whereas Apple just upped their power adapters. This is now 96 watts. So 96 compared to 230, this uses USB type C. And um, uh, the one thing I really like about Apple's implementation is that it doesn't need that much wattage. Meaning if you have a car that has a power outlet, you're gonna be able to charge this with it or on an airplane, it will accept it. Whereas these guys that draw so much power, 
it literally will shut off on you. It won't give you anything. Now, another thing that I wanna mention is the internal battery life. We have 80 watt hours, which is great for a Razer compared to pretty much 100 with the MacBook Pro. Tech Radar rated it at 11 hours and 40 minutes versus five hours and 30 minutes for their mixed test. Now that's a huge difference. Now the last thing that I wanna mention about power is the fact that you can charge and run your MacBook Pro off of a cheap USB power bank like this. Let's go ahead and open these up and check out the hinges. Nice. Both of these are excellent. The Razer has a great hinge, easy to open with one hand. The cutout isn't as deep as the MacBook, but it's wider, it works just as well. So great job on that Razer. And let's take a look over here. The MacBook is known for having a massive trackpad and the Razer's isn't as big, but for a Windows laptop, this is huge. Of course, it's not a magnetic, um, the trackpad like Apple's, which is excellent. So you do have a different in feel, no matter, you know, depending where you're clicking. Of course, with Apple's trackpad, you can configure how sensitive it is, how much of a click you feel, because in reality, it's magnets. You don't actually press down at all. And it definitely is a step above pretty much everything else on the market. Now let's go ahead and turn on the razor here. And we have a power button that is kind of in the speaker grill and it does not seem to be a fingerprint scanner or fingerprint reader, whereas the Mac does have Touch ID built into it. Now the Razer does have Windows Hello built in, which is awesome. I don't know as far as like how secure it is, but it is super convenient. You open up the laptop and it automatically sees your face and signs you in. Now I'm a really big fan of the new Magic Keyboard inside the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. The keys are fairly large. They have a good tactile uh, feedback when you're clicking them, almost like it's you know uh, getting closer to a mechanical keyboard. Um, and they're very nice and stable. Apple did a fantastic job. Now I spent a little bit of time here with the Studios keyboard and uh, I just mistyped a couple times. <laughs> It doesn't have as much travel, which is weird compared to the MacBook Pro. It also doesn't have that same kind of feedback when you're clicking it, and they're not as stable, and the keys are slightly smaller uh, as well. So because of that, like instead of hitting B, I just hit B. I'm sure you can get used to it, but the keyboard is definitely not as good. Comparing the keyboard backlighting, both of these look really good. It's an individual uh, LED per key, so we don't have a bunch of bleed outside of the keyboard. Um, the, the Razer Studio does have RGB LEDs, so right now, as you guys can see, it is shifting uh, different colors over here. It is a little bit brighter, but it is a little bit more difficult to see because uh, we're lighting up these um, the letters on top of white keycaps, so you don't have that contrast that you do with the MacBook Pro that has black keycaps. Now, right above the MacBook's keyboard, I have to mention the touch bar. Now, this thing is controversial. Yes, there are a few times where it is convenient for me personally, but overall, I wish Apple didn't spend the extra money for that OLED touchscreen chip and the controller that it needs to you know, power all of that and uh, just go back to having a regular keyboard. Now, next, we're gonna compare the speakers between these two. We know the MacBook Pro has some really great speakers. I'm excited to hear these ones, but first, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. You can build an engaging website for your business, your blog, portfolio, or for e-commerce with literally no web making experience. You just choose a template, customize blocks of text and images, and easily move them around. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and our site has been running flawlessly for almost two years, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in SEO tools. So whether you're making a website for a small business or anything else, go to squarespace.com slash maxtech for a free trial and use our custom link below when you're ready to launch to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's pit these laptop speakers against each other. We have our $500 Rode NTG microphone right here and make sure you put on your best headphones that you have, but I'll still give you guys my opinion after this. Let's start out with the studio laptop. Okay guys, you heard that for yourselves. My mind is 
blown. I mean, I knew the MacBook Pro would do better. It has, you know, six speakers. Two of those are dedicated woofers. Apple really had a focus on the audio quality. And now let's compare the quality of the built-in 720p webcams and the microphones. You guys let me know down in the comments section below which one you think looks better and sounds better. This is a webcam and microphone quality test with the Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition. This is a webcam and microphone test with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And now let's compare the displays and we have a lot of differences, both positives and negatives with both. The MacBook Pro has a standard LCD. It is a 3K display. It has nice contrast, nice colors. The Razer Studio, this thing is an OLED display, meaning there is no backlight like the LCD. Each pixel emits its own light, and that means that the blacks could be pure deep black, but that is not what I am noticing on this 4K touchscreen. Uh, when I was doing this audio test, I'm seeing so much reflections on uh, the Razer, and then I see way, way less on, on the MacBook Pro, and because of that, uh, the blacks here, even though they should be pure black, they look slightly grayish because of all of that reflection, whereas these are not pure black, but they do look a lot darker, and you guys could see that. Now, not only do we have the difference in reflection, but the LCD display uh, on the MacBook Pro is rated at 500 nits of brightness compared to 350 with a full screen that's lit up on the Razer, meaning if you're outside, you have a dimmer display, and it is more reflective, which is gonna make it a lot more difficult to use. Now, as I mentioned, the Razer is a touchscreen, which can be convenient, and it is fairly responsive using it uh, with touch, but do keep in mind, with it being so shiny and reflective, those fingerprints are very, very easy to see. I mentioned that the MacBook is brighter overall, but if you're looking off axis, there's a lot more brightness shift with the MacBook Pro than there is with the Razer, but there is less color shift, so it's kind of a, a win and lose with both of them. Now, the Razer screen is 4K, so when we're playing back 4K video, you definitely see that it's a little bit more detailed, it's a little bit sharper, because there's about 20% more pixels, and along with that, we don't have any black bars that are added. Uh, of course, we have this really big chin on here because this is a 16 by 9 display with 16 by, by 9 video, whereas the MacBook screen is 16 by 10, so we have the extra height. Now, uh, this OLED screen also supports HDR, so in a video like this, um, some of the highlights are a little bit brighter and some of the shadows are darker. Now, unfortunately, when the light is turned on right here, I'm seeing different reflections, even with it kind of uh, maxed out at the darker parts and that kind of ruins it so if you want a great movie watching experience you want to turn off the lights or have a dimmer kind of room to watch in and that is where it's really going to look excellent with colors and contrast especially the OLED is going to come into play of course make sure you have headphones or external speakers not the built-in ones now, one thing I want to point out is that if you're doing color critical work, you want to get a screen calibrator and calibrate to one specific brightness. And then whenever you're editing photos or video, stay at that brightness because OLED is more sensitive to different color shifts if you adjust it compared to LCD. And now, finally, let's get into performance. I'm gonna run the latest version of Geekbench. This is 5.1. We're gonna start out with the CPU test and I'll jump into specs while this is running. So both these have 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the MacBook, it's soldered in with the Razer. You can upgrade it yourself, but if you wanna jump up to the 64, which is the max on both these machines, it will cost you roughly 400 bucks because you have to remove the two sticks that are installed, whereas uh, Apple charges $400 to go up to 64. They both have a terabyte of SSD, but I'll talk about that a little bit in detail here in a bit. Uh, and we have a difference in the CPUs. Both are Intel 9th gen, but we have a six core CPU for the Razer Studio and an eight core 2.4 gigahertz on the MacBook Pro. The results are in and for single core, the performance is very similar, but in multi-core, we have 36% more performance with the eight core i9 MacBook Pro. Now let's do a little bit of a tougher test. This is Cinebench R20, and we'll also take a look at the clock speeds and we'll see what they're doing as far as temps. So our first Cinebench run with the Razer was very weird. Our clock speeds were good at first and the CPU wasn't really heating up and then it dropped down 
to 2.6 gigahertz, which is the base, and then it got even lower to 2.5 gigahertz, and the CPU only reached 60 degrees Celsius, with the fans being quite cool, and the, the actual CPU is only drawing 35 watts, and our Cinebench score is quite disappointing, as you guys could see, even though uh, we were set to full performance mode. So I did some digging, and you have to go into Razer Synapse's software, which crashed on me a couple times, uh, but here we are in here, and this overrides the Windows control. This is very important. If you buy this machine and you don't want to, you don't think you want to deal with your RGB LEDs and all that kind of stuff, you might just totally ignore it. But you're going to be missing out on a lot of performance if you're pushing the CPU to the max. So we're going to go in here, hit custom, and it's set to medium, and we're just going to go high on the CPU and also high on uh, the graphics card, and then save it. Let's go ahead and run Cinebench one more time. And now, bam, we just hit 50, 70 watts right there, 79 watts out of the, uh, to the CPU from the outlet. That's excellent. Our temps now, 75 degrees Celsius, and uh, we're running at 3.6, 3.8 gigahertz, 3.9, pretty solid. All right, the results are in. We have a score of 2,439 on the Racer and 3,262 on our MacBook Pro. And how they get there is a di huge difference uh, of the way these laptops are designed. So it's about 35% faster with the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which makes sense. But this guy right here, um, they actually spike up to about 77 watts, and that's just for a little tiny second, and then it drops down to 45 watts, just like it's designed to, the base TDP of the chip, whereas the Apple one will go up to like 88 watts, and then it'll try to stay at about 60, 65 watts, meaning it's pushing more uh, uh, electricity, juice into the CPU, it's making it uh, heat up uh, higher, but it's running at the same 3 to 3.1 uh, gigahertz on 8 cores, where Whereas this runs at a solid 3 gigahertz with only 6. Now this, once it's stabilized, the fans are quieter than the MacBook Pro and the CPU is running a lot cooler, 65 degrees Celsius compared to over 90. Now Apple could max out the fans or you could do it yourselves, but they're okay with having to be that hot and trying to keep the fans lower. But ultimately, of course, the MacBook Pro has a lot more CPU performance. Now before we test out the graphics, let me quickly mention the SSDs. Both of these have a one terabyte SSD built in, and with the Razer, you are stuck with that. You have no other options, at least when you're ordering it from the factory, whereas with the MacBook Pro, you can go up to a two terabyte for $400 more, you could go for a four terabyte, and even go up to an eight terabyte internally, which is crazy, but it is soldered in. Here you have to upgrade it yourself, and if you wanna go, say, get um, a two terabyte, it's gonna cost you about 500 bucks, and then the quality is still not as good as the SSD that you get in the MacBook Pro that does not slow down with large capacities or depending on how full it is. So if you want the best SSDs, the Mac offers that and it's all built in with high capacities compared to the Razer. And now finally, the graphics. And we see a massive difference in Geekbench 5's OpenCL test, where I can compare them side by side. We have almost 27,000 versus almost 97,000. That's a massive difference, about three times more performance with the RTX Quadro uh, 5000 that has double the video memory. And uh, here, of course, it's a lower power chip. It doesn't need as much wattage. And uh, the performance really shows as well. Now I wanna do one more test. I'm gonna unplug both these laptops because the graphics card inside of uh, the Razer, it needs a lot of power to run. So if you start doing some work on the go, even if you max out all your performance settings, it is gonna be limited. And wow, so the MacBook Pro actually got slightly faster somehow on battery. There actually is not a difference between plugged in, unplugged, there's no performance modes, everything is automatic and it runs well. Whereas with Windows, you have those modes. And here, we went from almost 100,000 to now 33,800. And now, these are very close. We have 27,175. 33,800. So yes, it's still better uh, even on battery power, but you guys see the massive amount of performance you lose when you're you know, unplugged. And then uh, we set Windows to maximum performance, but in the Razer setting, it actually says that to use performance modes, your system must be plugged into a power outlet. And that is because this graphics card needs a ton of power, as you guys saw with the, the power um, adapter having 230 watts versus 96 with the Mac. Now, if you wanna see some 
real world testing, I'm gonna be comparing both of these side by side with a variety of different video editing tests. So if you guys wanna see that, there's gonna be a link down in the video description where you guys can go check out our other channel that is more for filmmaking and make sure you're subscribed if you wanna see how they actually compare. But overall, performance wise, the Mac definitely wins on the CPU and the Razer definitely wins on the graphics if you do have that plugged in. And now the final topic and that is price. Apple not only made the 16 inch MacBook Pro better in a lot of ways, faster, they also dropped the price. And so the Razer now is $500 more expensive than the MacBook Pro. Now, if we get the same processor that's in the Razer, that's another $300 of savings. And then you can upgrade your RAM, get a better SSD, stuff like that. So now the MacBook is looking more affordable. Uh, the Razer, it has a nicer screen as long as you're not gonna be in bright areas or outside as because of the reflections. Uh, and it's built really well for a Windows computer. Um, the trackpad is fairly nice, but still the keyboard doesn't compare to the MacBook, the trackpad doesn't, and definitely the speakers. So the biggest selling point is graphics. If you're a gamer, uh, you can look at their other models or this one, it's gonna do great. Or if you're doing 3D animations where it can make use of the Quadro graphics card with RTX, that is gonna be the real real big selling point with the, this machine compared to the AMD graphics inside of the MacBook Pro. And of course, if you like having a lot of ports, you don't wanna deal with adapters, dongles, any of that, it is very nice to have the convenience of having all of that built in. Overall, it's a nice machine, but if you're somebody that edits on the go, you're productive, you want the better battery life, the brighter screen that's less reflective, better keyboard, the Mac Pro wins in that area. So we're gonna have links to both of them down in the video description if you guys want to go and check those out. Uh, let us know any questions you have in the comments and click that little circle above if you want to subscribe and there's a couple great videos right over there for you guys. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.